So God got me where he want me to be, right here uh, spending my life. And this is my purpose, helping the kids with disabilities and helping their families. So this is our first year to uh, have the organization named Safe Diversity Communities. For 17 years, it was named uh, Bob John Endeavors. But I wanted to change because I wanted to be able, I'm an activist, I wanted to be able to uh, give scholarships to students from all walks of life because we only gave students scholarships with disabilities. But now we are safe diversity. So that means we have to be diverse because I have students that uh, uh, companies that's changing their criteria to meet what safe diversity is doing. I serve on the board for um, Spring Foundation and it's been in existence for 25 years. I've been on the board for six years. Last year was the first year that they gave a scholarship to a student with disability because they only gave scholarship to scholars. But Spring Foundation mission statement said they would support every child. But guess what? They weren't doing every child. But we have to ask. And I asked, and Superintendent Watson said, Miss Scott, we never had an advocate on this board. They've never asked. Say, but since you asked, we're going to let you know we got your back. So guess what? So now, <laughs> here's the scholarships. Also, um, uh, working with, I serve on the board for uh, the Houston Frontier Club. So guess what? They're going to be giving one student a scholarship. So let's give them a hand. <laughs> so on these boards, what I do is educate the, the people about diversity and inclusion. Also, I serve on the board for the MLK Foundation, OK, the parade. So guess what? They're going to be giving a scholarship to student with disabilities. <laughs> and I am working on uh, United Airlines. Uh, Tina and Carl, they called me up and asked me to speak on um, this month, February the 12th. I'll be speaking at uh, United Airlines. So guess what? I'm going to educate them on scholarship of student with disabilities. <laughs> Also, my friend is the Diverse and Inclusion, Master of Diverse and Inclusion. And that's Dennis Kennedy. So I'm working with him. So he said, Miss Scott, I got your back. So guess what? He's going to sponsor a kid with a disability. All right. We, we just educating everybody that we're not saying that uh, you don't get scholarships to the scholars. But all we saying in kids with disabilities can excel as well. Stand up, Kendra. Stand up. This child is so smart. Do you think that she can do this braiding? She may not can do it on paper, but you should see how she can braid. She is smart. I work with her. She's been in my program since ninth grade, and she's a scholarship recipient, so let's give her a hand. <laughs> she is going to ACC, and guess what? We will follow her throughout her college career, no matter how long it takes. We follow her throughout her college career to get that. Also, I don't know where he is around here, but uh, my grandson is somewhere around here. But he, uh, uh, he is artistic. And these kids that you wouldn't believe they may have autism, but they're so special in another area. My, uh, uh, Leona has her son. Uh, go ahead and tell him about your son and what he's doing right now. Tell him he's doing. And he loves it. Tell him what he's doing right now. He is. So Jonathan is a behind-the-scenes person, yes. too. No cameras on him. Yes. Like he, your children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they be running for camera, but they're so smart. You know, you probably would see a normal kid couldn't do what they do. They are so intelligent, and I just love helping them. Because I have a disability. I have a hidden disability. I'm a 24-year breast cancer survivor, and I had brain damage. So that's why I left the police department. And I said I was going to dedicate my life to helping the kids to excel and let you know that we only want to be judged by the contents of our character, not by our disability. And I have proven that because um, two years ago, um, I was appointed by the governor's office. And that title was is that I helped to make decisions for health and human service. I served on that board in Austin, and I traveled around the state for six and a half years. I mean, the state would send me to Austin and to Washington. Every year I went to Washington. And I met with those legislators, I met with the congressmen, the senators. I was a true advocate. And I saved the state a lot of money while I was there. And I went when uh, I think um, Mr. Uh, uh, Conan was um, Secretary of Labor. And we had like 21 people went to Washington 
And so we could not get to him, right? He didn't have no appointment. So I decided to stay in Washington by myself. This is late. I stayed in Washington by myself. And I went to his office the next day. And uh, I said, I, I need to see Ms. No, it was Mr. Morales. And they said, well, Miss Scott, do you have an appointment? I said, no, I don't have an appointment today. They said, well, you just cannot walk in the office of the Secretary of Labor, United States of America, without an appointment. I saw I said, I apologize. They said, because he's in meetings all day long. I said to his chief of staff, guess what? I have all day. <laughs> he looked at me, you said what? I said, I have all day. <laughs> so he told me to hold on. So he went back in the back and he had me sitting out there in the lobby about 45 minutes, right? And so then he came out and he said, uh, Miss Scott, could you follow me? So I'm walking down in the Capitol, down the hall behind him and all that. I said, well, he might be taking me to the front of the fire squad. I said, sir, I said, where are we going? He said, I'm taking you to meet the Secretary of Labor. Okay. <laughs> So I said, when this room, and all these people, about 300 people in the room, I said, well, how you going to know who I am? He said, ma'am, he know who you are. I said, okay. <laughs> so when he got through talking on the stage, the Secret Service standing around him, so then they was begging for me to come, right? So they begged me, and I'm walking all up there just proud. No, I was scared to death, right? <laughs> <laughs> so when I he said, yes, ma'am, Miss Scott. He said, you got two minutes. I said, okay. I said, all I'm asking is, is that, Bill 1435, and I said, uh, if you change anything in the bill, I said, it's going to really hurt a lot of people with disabilities. And I said, I'm a woman with a disability. And he scared me so bad, you guys. He said, who are you think? Who do you think you are? Come up here with no appointment telling me what to do, what I can and cannot do. I said, oh, sir. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, you know what? I said, I'm not telling you what to do because you're the Secretary of Labor of the United States of America. I'm just going to give you my heart and tell you how I feel. I'm here, I'm not advocating for dogs, I'm not advocating, I'm advocating for myself as a woman with a disability. He said, well, you don't look like nobody with a disability, you look like a picture here. I said, that's it. Everything you see don't look good, ain't good. He said, then he told the secret service, he said, did y'all hear what she said? She said she don't look good. I said, I ain't say I didn't look good. <laughs> and guess what he did after I said that, because he saw it was sincere. He told the secret service, he gave him his phone, he said, give me a picture with, with me and her. So I said, okay. I said, well, you got a picture. I said, can I get a picture of my phone? I said, nobody, when I get back to the state of Texas, nobody's not going to believe I got, a, I got a meeting with you. I got a picture. I need a picture. So I have that picture in my phone today. And she go up, and, and, and you have to be an advocate. You have to believe in what you believe in. And I believe in what I work for. And I believe in people with disabilities, and I believe in being an advocate. So he told me, whenever I come back to Washington, whenever I came back to Washington, make sure I come and visit him. He said, the state of Texas needs to be paying me because I'm helping to keep those jobs for the people up there through DARS. It was DARS at the time, it's Texas Workforce Commission now. But it is, and I believe in that. 